Jane Blonde Spilots Are Forever is the last in the Jane Blonde series and it was full of emotion for me when I was writing it and I know I've heard from you guys that it was quite full of emotion for you too. So I had a lot of fun tying together all the different strands of story that have been happening from the very first Jane Blonde book, Sensational Spilot. And where I actually decided to base some of this was in my own old school hall, because that's where a lot of um, my small adventures happened to me when I was a when I was a schoolgirl. And um, my adventures were, of course, nothing like the scale of Janie's, but nonetheless, I enjoyed my time at school, and then, and I particularly remembered the school hall. And I was at uh, a girls' school in Dorothy in Manchester, Fairfield High School for Girls, and it had a beautiful old hall with um, boards at the back with the name of people who had gone on to get their degrees and a stage at the front where the headmistress would talk to us. So that image was very much in my head as I was writing Spilots Are Forever. So perhaps when you're reading it, you can picture your own school hall and maybe it will fit in somewhere as well. So Jane Blonde, Spilots Are Forever, here's just a little taster for you. She sighed. Why did you have to wake up now? Struggling out of bed, Janie peeped out of the window, wondering if it was the moans and howls of the ferocious gusts of winds outside that had woken her. A storm was brewing, although the day had been close and hot. An Indian summer. That was what her mum called the unusual autumn weather. From the darkness appeared a face. Aha, whispered Janie. So it wasn't just the gale that had woken her. It must have been her spy instincts kicking in. Janie drew back behind the curtains, then moved alongside the window. She had been trained well. Surprise, surprise, surprise. The first rule of spying. G Mama had taught her that right back at the beginning. So instead of doing the obvious thing and looking through the crack in the middle of the curtains and risking being spotted, Janie hopped up onto the edge of her bed and peeked down through the narrow gap above the curtain rail. The face appeared disembodied, bobbing around in the alley behind the house like the moon on a stick. But that was only an illusion. The spy, for that was obviously what it was, was simply dressed in black, so his body wasn't visible in the darkness. Furthermore, the spy was friend, not foe. Janie relaxed and twitched the curtain to one side. What was Alfie up to? It was after midnight, and even though it wasn't that unusual for spylets like herself and Alfie to be galloping about the globe in the middle of the night, that was only when they were on a mission. She watched as Alfie jumped over the back fence, catching his trousers on a jagged splinter. He dropped down, head swiveling left and right, as he took in the details of the garden. Janie opened the window. Halo, what are you doing? Alfie stared back at her, his upturned face glowing in the moonlight. For a moment he looked terrified. Then he grinned, holding up a scrap of paper that was nearly snatched from his hand by the wind. What's that? And what are you wearing? His Janie. Janie only ever saw her best friend and spilot buddy in one of three outfits, his school uniform, his denim blue spy suit, or jeans and a sweatshirt. Oh, and occasionally his football gear. Right now, he was sporting wide black leg trousers that billowed around his legs, no wonder they'd snagged on the fence, and a short v-neck black jumper that made him look taller and more gangly than usual. Arthur glanced down at his clothes, then shrugged. Style was never that important to him. The little tornado behind him made his whole body quiver, and Janie tutted as she realised what he'd been up to. He'd been flying the pet jet, and he'd left the engine running, so much so that some sort of force was dragging him back towards it. Hang on, whispered Janie, I'm coming down. Moments later, she eased open the back door and flitted silently into the garden. Alfie, why didn't you just spiv me, she'd been about to say. He could easily have contacted her on the spy visualator she always wore around her neck or kept on the bedside table at night. But he wasn't there. Janie pushed back the mousy hair that whipped around her face as the gathering storm grew more violent. Head down, she battled through the window, wind towards the back of the garden where Alfie had been standing. Gone. Alfie, said Janie crossly. She could have just stayed in bed. What was he mucking about at? The wheel of the pet jet was still spinning. Maybe he was hiding. A glint of moonlight caught her eye as she looked for him behind the garage. Then she'd finally made up her mind that he wasn't there. Janie braved the gusts of winds and foraged in the grass for whatever it was that had gleamed. It was a little glass ball, clear for the most part, with a curved sliver of coloured glass nestled at the centre. For a moment, Janie wondered if it was one of G Mama's sweets. She'd been living in the garage for a while, after all, and the ball could be a reinvented Malteser that had been through the wower. But then she spotted a strand of black fibre attached to it. Alfie's. 
It had probably fallen out of his pocket when he caught his new black trousers on the rotting fence. Well, I might just keep it, she thought. Serve him right for getting me out of bed on a hideous windy night. So that's just the beginning of Jane Blonde, Spilots Are Forever. <laughs>